Louis! At last, there you are. Mother, wait, I... Come, we have to be quick. No, wait, Mother, I... Time is running out, Louis. First, we must... No! That's enough. I won't go a step further unless you explain to me what is going on here. I'm begging you. Talk to me. You must trust me, my son. You are not ready yet. You are the one who should trust me. Tell me what's happening. You would never believe me. I came all the way here for you. Now I've found you. I'm ready, Mother. If only... Louis, I have always taught you to keep your mind open and logical. I know you are going to find it hard to believe, but what I am going to reveal to you is entirely true. Many years ago, I found out that demons really do live among us. I beg your pardon? And that they can influence our thoughts. Mother, listen to yourself. I know you're exhausted, but for crying out loud, listen to what you're saying. Demons? <laughs> what next? An ancient monster with a head like an octopus? What do your demons look like? Have they got horns and a pointed tail? No, these are not creatures with billy goat's legs. Forget your Christian folklore. Imagine them more as parasitic spirits. They possess their hosts and direct them from inside. Parasitic spirits? Yes, they are capable of going from one body to another as they see fit. And two of them are present on this island. Right, so let me guess. Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory, right? You felt it too? No, even if home does look the part. But I don't know who else could do it, given that we're on their territory. Many years ago, well before you were born, I crossed paths with one of them. Since then, I've spent my life trying to find it again. When we recovered the Alizif, I was persuaded that Von Burchard was working for this demon in one way or another. But I thought he would hand the book to a middleman during this conference. That's where I made an error, an error that could well turn out to be fatal. The one who Burchard was meant to give the book to was none other than the demon in person, Mortimer. Not to mention that Holm had sent Volner to get it for him. Holm and Mortimer are demons? They both seem to disagree about many things, but I'll admit I never knew exactly why. There are many of them, Louis, not just those two. Mother, have you any proof to support any of this? Of course, but you do too. You had everything laid out in front of you. Didn't you notice anything? I came across his family tree, in his study. An only son. Since the Third Crusade. The fall of St. John of Acre, Louis. The fall of St. John of Acre. Well, those property deeds across the world, all signed by the same hand, and over several centuries. I am proud of you, Louis. I found your notes, written in lemon juice. Where all eyes size you up. At one stage, I was so afraid of losing my mind that I noted everything down. Congratulations, Louis. Wait, please tell me you didn't open Pandora's box. The urn? No, I didn't. Why? Good. We'll deal with it later. I went beyond the Nightmare Mother. You understood the Masonic date. 1191. Of course, it was during that siege that the demon took possession of Sir Mortimer. They spent a whole night in conversation until the early hours of the morning. Mortimer had passed the test. He had charmed the demon, and so it chose him to be its host for centuries to come. But tell me, did you find his secret study? I did indeed. Did you see his maps of the world? He has contacts the world over. Yes, I've been developing the Golden Order across the world for many years, and I've never seen anyone with such influence. It's simply inhuman. I must admit, I found it difficult to understand how and why Mortimer didn't have a place in history. 
On the continent, Mortimer and Holm are mere dandies who organize society balls. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. You mean the conference? How can you explain that someone manages to bring together so many important figures without anyone knowing? And without any security or personnel. Louis, I am proud of you. You came all this way, you found me, you have surpassed me. You taught me everything I know. Right. How did it all begin? I saw him! What, what do you mean, you saw him? I was 20 years old. I was young and carefree. I traveled the world in search of adventure. In the Persian Gulf, we came across an ancient grimoire that became unlocked. Composed of seven parts, each one was a book in itself, set in a sort of metal armor that structured the whole thing. When all the volumes were brought together, they formed a single book. On my return to Paris, I set to studying these pages. I spent all my days and nights studying them. Oh, I can imagine you doing that. But the writing was in a language I had never seen before. Developed well before Sumerian, in my opinion. So I got the idea to form a small occult circle composed of all the major names in the occult world to see if anyone else could crack it. And you found no one. And I found someone, Louis. I found him. Or rather, he found me. He was young, charismatic, he was flamboyant. You mean Mortimer? He was a veritable mine of knowledge. I showed him the book, and he was able to decipher a few passages. We spent several months together studying the pages. He helped me understand certain passages, until I realized that he only translated a few parts for me. But I had aroused his interest. It was too late. How so? I mean to say he manipulated me. He used me, and in the end, he stole the book with all its secrets. Did he ever go to your place? Not once. At least I don't think so. But before disappearing, he proposed a pact between us. He proposed that I follow him and let him teach me, allow him to bring me up. And you refused, of course. Why naturally, Louis. You don't make deals with the devil. After that, I spent my whole life looking for him. Three years later, in Berlin, I just missed him. In London, I lost six members of the order in a chase. In 1741, in Tunisia, I found a sect of fanatics who had crossed paths with him once. 1741, in Poland. 1749, in India. Eight years ago, in Venice. We agreed never to speak about what happened in Venice, Louis. You agreed, and that was before you spoke to me about demons. Wait, the baby we delivered, you and me, that night in Venice? Did he have anything to do with Lord Mortimer? The child was his son. We stole his son? Are you insane? I always thought we took him to save him. That was the case. It was precisely to save him from his father. Need I remind you the mother died during childbirth? What became of the child? Later. For the moment, that is not the key issue here. Once we found the Alizif in Paris, I followed von Borchert's trail here. I didn't think it would lead me straight to the demon. It was careless of me. He toyed with me for a few days, until I caught on, until I saw him as he was. But he had no intention of letting me leave. We are all his pawns, Louis, and if we don't want to spend the rest of our lives turning round in circles here, we must absolutely get off this island. All right, can we move on? Wait a minute, one last thing. I want to know what happened with Elizabeth Adams. Louis, we haven't time for those details. I'm sorry, Mother, but I want to know. She was one of the receptacles for these monsters. I met her parents when she was born. One of the demons got inside her. The demon used her to spy on her father, John Adams. He is one of the founding fathers and vice president of the United States, you know. Mortimer possessed her? 
No, I don't think it was Mortimer. Her father, John Adams, hired me to tend to her, but the evil in her was too deep. In spite of the various treatments I tried on her, I never succeeded in getting it out of her. It's not something I'm proud of, Louis, but I had to try everything. Do you know who killed her? Absolutely not. I want to know what happened between you and Emily's sister. Great responsibility often brings difficult choices, Louis. That's all you need to know. Mother, I won't take a step further if you don't answer me. You dare blackmail me? I'm listening. All right, I used her. So there you are. Happy now? We had the Al-Azif, and I didn't think we would be able to escape with it. In order to ensure that the book did not fall into their hands, or that one of them couldn't read in us where we had hidden it, I asked Emily it's to... Emma. Yes, or rather for me, it was Emily. So I asked Emma to hide it without anyone seeing, and then I disposed of her. I am sorry for her, but she was part of the Golden Order, Louis. She knew the rules when she joined. What did you negotiate about the Alazif with Volner? Absolutely nothing. I managed to pull the wool over his eyes until I found a way to flee. What was going on with the cannons in Tuscany? It was nothing. Since when does the Order finance wars? The cannons for that Bonaparte fellow? Listen, once in the lion's den, I did whatever I could to appear legitimate. So yes, I pretended to be interested in Mortimer's project about a young military man who was seeking funding for a foundry in Tuscany. Between you and me, if buying China would have enabled me to escape, I would have signed without hesitation. Samuel Ritter du Chois, you wanted to send me a letter about Godoy. I wanted you to run a check on Duke Manuel, but frankly it doesn't really matter anymore now. Godoy is just a pawn like the others. He is not the one I was looking for. You know, I found your package under a wharf plank. As a matter of fact, I needed it yesterday. I wasn't expecting anyone to take it. On the evening of my arrival, Cardinal Piaggi came looking for you. He was determined to give you a letter. More of his lists. Louis, I think I know what's in that letter, and I beseech you to believe that it is the least of our worries. We can sort that out later. Are you going to tell me what happened to your hand? Better than that, I shall show you. Good. I think that's about right. We shall speak about it once we get back to France. Great actions for humanity have been decided by demons for centuries, Louis. They are playing with our destiny. We are their slaves. And it's time for it to stop. By the way, what was Mortimer's project at this conference? He wants the United States to occupy all the North American territory. France should recover Louisiana and give it to the United States. In that case, the Americans would just have to push west to chase the Spanish from the continent once and for all. And as Mortimer controls Washington, you may just as well say that it will put him at the head of a world superpower. We should do our utmost to put a stop to Mortimer's plans. But for the time being, there are more pressing matters. Are you going to tell me why we're here? There, that's why we are here. <laughs>